A significant development on the North Korean front. China has announced it's ordering all Chinese companies operating in North Korea to close down to comply with ramped up U.N. sanctions against the rogue regime. That's all part of the United States strategy to squeeze North Korea diplomatically and financially to avert war. Joining us now for a reaction is Gordon Chang, an East Asia expert and a columnist with The Daily Beast. So you think that this announcement today by China was very significant for a, a reason that you think China never thought they would do. Yeah, it's because of the pressure from President Trump. You know, the Chinese, despite all the friction with Pyongyang, still support the Kim regime. But... They look at Trump and they don't want to take him on. And so that's why the Chinese really went beyond what U.N. sanctions require with this announcement. And the whole issue is going to be people say, oh, you know, this must be a change in the attitude in Beijing. No, I think it's really going to be a whole everyone's going to be starting to look at how rigorously the Trump administration continues to enforce this. If the administration does that the Chinese are going to continue to yield to the president because they know that the U.S. is overwhelming leverage over the Chinese. So do you think that President Trump is the one calling the shots in Asia right now? Oh, absolutely. You know, the Chinese, everyone says, oh, you know, the Chinese own the 21st century. Well, they can't even deal with the North Koreans. And right now it's the United States that is driving all of the efforts to denuclearize or disarm North Korea. And the Chinese are really bystanders, even in their own region. People are starting to notice that and they're saying, you know, to Beijing, if you're such a superpower, how come you can't deal with Kim Jong Un? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think the Chinese are losing face, as we call it. Um, but the most important thing is that people are starting to recognize that the U.S. is is using its power to do something really good. There's been a lot of hand wringing um, by some uh, that oppose President Trump that worry about a rhetorical war, that um, he says something about Lil Kim and then comes yeah. back, and that, that, that this is going to maybe inadvertently lead to a miscalculation by Kim Jong-un and that he might do something that he would regret and that we would not want to have to do. do. What do you hear from the region? Are they worried about an escalating war of words? Yeah, I mean, everyone does worry about that, and especially, of course, in South Korea, which is right up against North Korea and Japan. But in general, though, you see both Seoul and Tokyo supporting President Trump because mm -hmm. they realize the only country that can solve this is the United States. And so while I certainly would like to see the president maybe with a fewer uh, insults, the most important thing I think he's doing, and it's really brilliant, were these sanctions that he put on North Korea on Thursday, because that's what prompted the Chinese re announcement of Do today. Do you think they're already having an effect in North Korea? They will. I mean, sanctions always take time to work out. And, and what the United States needs to do is cut off all those flows of money for not only the missiles and the nukes, but gift politics. Kim Jong-un uses gifts like Mercedes and other luxuries to buy senior regime elements. He needs their loyalty. And so if President Trump can cut that money off, and it's going to be a difficult task, but I'm sure that we can do it if we continue to apply ourselves, if we don't take our foot off the accelerator. Did you hear that story about um, North Korean officials reaching out to Republicans and Republican consultants so that they could try to figure out President Trump? Like, I think it would be hard as a North Korean official to go in and be called in by Kim Jong-un and be, be asked, like, what does this mean? And they're finding it really hard to explain because it's so unpredictable. Yeah, well, that story is true um, because they have reached out, for instance, to Bruce Klingner of the Heritage Foundation, Douglas Paul of, of Carnegie. And, and the reason is that the North Koreans don't know what to expect out of Trump. And this story is also true in Beijing, where I think in the beginning they thought that they could collar Trump and basically push him around because they pushed around, you know, the previous president. But right now, I think the Chinese are wary of Trump. And that's why we saw this announcement. The North Koreans don't know what to do. Everyone is really off balance right now. And this gives President Trump an advantage because up until this 19th Party Congress for the Chinese, yep. you know, it starts on October 18th. It's a big Pengu's deal. Big deal. The Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, is in a very vulnerable period. And that's why President Trump, I think, really pushed him with that sanctions announcement on Thursday. Yeah, that's really interesting. People aren't necessarily paying attention to that. It's only about three weeks away. How often do they have these Congresses? Once every five years. Right. And at this Congress, it looks like Xi Jinping is going to break a lot of the party's norms that were put in place by Deng Xiaoping to ensure stability. So people, although they understand that Xi Jinping is extremely powerful, there's a real possibility that if he falters, everyone is going to jump on him because there's so many people who have been disadvantaged by him in the last five years. This is going to be fascinating, and we love it that you come on Fox News to explain it to us all. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dana. All right.